InvestorIdeas.com podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com podcast. In today's podcast, Investor Ideas interviews David Kerbell, the CEO of Ritual Superfoods Incorporated, trading on the CSE as RSF, which is a functional superfoods company that creates plant-based elixirs which support immunity, focus, and relaxation, where we discuss Ritual Superfoods' line of functional mushrooms as well as adaptogen formulations, as well as the superfoods and functional foods categories. Uh, so today I'm speaking with David Kerbel, who is the CEO of Ritual Superfoods. David, it's great to be able to talk to you. So for any of our listeners who aren't familiar with you and your company, could you give a little bit of a brief history of the formation um, up to today and then why you're specifically focusing on the superfoods market? Sure. Um, so Ritual Superfoods has been around for about a year now. I'll give you a little bit of my background. I've been in the consumer package units business for 35 years, and I've seen great trends and great opportunities throughout my career. This is the third time I've been able to be part of an IPO and I'm really excited to be here within this space with this brand and be talking to you and potential investors today. So can you maybe talk a little bit about the specific products that Ritual makes and sort of how you came to those developments and why you focused on those specific formulations? Sure. So we, we are, as Ritual Superfoods is in the functional foods arena. That's a multiple billion, $275 billion global category. We focus that into functional mushrooms and adaptogens, which is a $34 billion category growing at a rate of about seven and a half to eight kegger a year. So we feel really good about the space that we're in. We feel great that we can differentiate our products. So our first entree is within the functional food set, functional mushrooms and adaptogens. And it's very important that those two play off of each other because one feeds one. So we have our first product, which is our chaga, and that's an immune booster. We tie in the chaga mushroom, that, that functional mushroom we talked about, and we add in the elethra root, that adaptogen, to really supercharge your immunity boost. Our second product is a lion's mane. And that lion's mane mushroom, again, is that functional mushroom, but we tie that in with rhodiola root, that adaptogen, that natural enhancement. And then the third piece, the rishi, and we call it our stress relief, our rishi relax, we tie that in with ashwagandha root. Again, those adaptogens make us different. The blends of those adaptogens make us different and unique, but also give that really boost for everyday consumers to be part of their everyday ritual. So obviously you're using that combination of functional mushrooms and adaptogens. How do you come about these formulations and recipes? And I guess what's the... What's the sort of science backing behind these being effective as either stress relievers or performance, you know, boosters, whatever it's going to be? Sure. Well, the, the functional mushroom piece is interesting because it's a 2000 year old uh, practice uh, for exactly that for both physical and mental health. It's been used for millennia. And um, what we've done is taken that through someone that uh, our chief in information and innovation officer, and she's developed these brands, these elixirs, these formulations to adapt both the 2000 year old traditions of the functional mushrooms with these adaptogens to really grow this opportunity to be very efficacious and effective. So we've got 2000 years of history. We've got up to date, new and exciting adaptogens that we start and we blend into this product. You know, in October of 2020, Whole Foods, uh, which is not a customer of ours yet, hopefully we will be, but Whole Foods named uh, functional foods, which we play in, in adaptogens as the number one food trend for 2021. So we feel we've got verification. We feel we've got uh, recognition of what we've done. And the coolest part of it is, is we've got a great tasting product. You know, there are products that are out there and we do this specifically with our blend. We have an all natural bitter blocker. We have no artificial flavoring whatsoever in terms of what's in our product. We have no artificial sweeteners. We developed this with core functional foods, 
functional mushrooms and adaptogens to really make a difference in folks' lives. I take it every day. Um, so I guess as far as customers who are looking for these types of products, um, when can they expect rollout of your guys' products? And also, maybe could you go, Mary, into a little bit more specifics about sort of the format of these products? So are you going to be taking this in like a powder that you add to other foods, or is it going to be a, a bar or something like that? Sure. So the, the <laughs> first launch within Ritual Superfoods is going to be elixir. So it's a powder form. We have it uh, in a stick for on the go use and we have like a 150 uh, gram uh, tub for multiple use. The, so three formulas, Chaga, Lion's Mane, Rishi within two formats on the go stick and in the tubs plus a variety. So we have seven SKUs to come to market. In, in terms of our retail reach. So as we talk about our team and I'll share with you that uh, of folks with experience. We, we talked to retailers and e-tailers first. As we developed over the past year, who we are, what we are, what we stand for, where we play, we got really good feedback. And that feedback is going to allow us with uh, by the end of Q1 to be in uh, distribution in 2,400 retail outlets and over 12,000 retail facings. So we feel really good about where we are. So you'll be able to see products coast to coast throughout the United States really by April 1st. So our consumers are going to not only be able to buy the product online and through the traditional tr tremendous e-com platforms, but the dot-com platforms of our customers and in 2,400 stores uh, throughout the United States. So we feel great about that. We're not, this isn't a wish and a prayer. These are products that are already committed to that'll be going out in the next 60 to 90 days and you'll be able to buy them at the shelf. That sounds fantastic. So you did briefly touch on um, your team and sort of the expertise that you've had to gather to build these products. Could you maybe go into more details about sort of the, the experience needed to create superfoods of this caliber? Yeah, and, and it's thanks for that question. It's tremendous team effort. So we've got a team of um, individuals and uh, that came together here by choice. We're all in this because we all want to make a difference. And we've got 125 years collective CPG experience uh, of putting unique products into both health and wellness, as well as traditional format within CPG. So I think that, um, you know, our, our COO, Warren Spence, has got 25 years experience. I've got 35 years experience. Our chief innovation officer, Stacy Gillespie, she was the chief formulator here. She was the one that put these products together. We all have our, our, our input from retailers and e-tailers and consumers all over the world. Our marketing team, led by Peter Prolaccio, has really done some good insight work. But Stacy's really that tipping point, that one that puts it together of a great tasting product that's efficacious, that gives the consumers what they're looking for. Again, an alternative in the natural space and wellness using functional foods and superfoods to help everyday stress, to help boost immunity, and to really help everyone focus in on, on to the day at hand. Um, so obviously that's a huge amount of expertise and experience you guys have gathered together there. Um, is that sort of the main factor that separates you from other companies in this category or how do you really differentiate yourself as the superfoods category, as you mentioned, is growing um, aggressively and more and more competitors are coming into this space? Sure. And I think that's a big part of it. You know, the team I'm most proud of because Really, and I'll give you a, a, a specific example. You know, we, we're 100%, we're an organic product, uh, non-GMO product, all natural. And um, typically, if a company uh, that gets into our space within the superfood or the functional food format takes six to nine months to get uh, verification on organic. I mean, that certified organic product it took us six weeks, not because 
we're, we're magical, but because we understand what the complexities are, what every uh, governing body needs. It's the same with our retailers. When we talk about being in 2,400 stores and 12,000 points of distribution, we understand what their needs are. So I think that the, the, the concept of having this world-class team with this execution mind, with the end in mind, the, the success in mind, every step of the way really sets us apart. Um, so obviously another big thing that's impacting the company right now is transitioning uh, from a private to a public company on the CSE. Could you talk a little bit about maybe some of the differences as well as similarities between the consumer group that you're aiming at, as well as now the investor group that's being attracted towards the functional food markets? Yeah, it's a, and, and you know what? That's a great question. I really believe that a lot of our investors are our consumers too. Everyone's looking to, there are a couple of different factors. Number one, plant-based product and organic products is hot and investors are looking for something that does not have the barriers of entry uh, that some of the other hot items that um, I'm sure you've talked about in the past do have. This is something we can sell everywhere within the U.S., We'll be getting our Health Canada approval within the next 30 days. We'll be sending our products into Canada. We'll be doing this because we're a powdered form. We can take our product and ship it into Asia Pacific and into the EU as well. But it comes down to every investor that I've spoken with over, over our journey here has all indicated that they're looking for this. The fact that we tie in the adaptogens in these functional mushrooms really makes it different. So as a consumer, typically today, you'd have to buy chaga uh, mushroom and alethra root separately. We've combined the two. So our investors are, are very interested and I get grilled all the time. Why are we doing this? And why are we doing that? And when we have a chance to tell our story, not only do we convert them to consumers, we also convert most of them into investors. Um, so you mentioned coming into Canada and getting your, your health Canada approval license. So with these formulations that you're making, as far as I know, functional mushrooms and adaptogens aren't really regulated in any sort of heavy sense. Um, what are there any difficulties when it comes to bringing your product to different markets and sort of the factors or test factors that they're going to be looking at to see that your product is safe or providing the, the qualities? Do you have to avoid um, maybe certain health, health claims or something like that on your products? Yeah, and, and we support good health. I mean, that's something that, that every, every company's responsibility. We're not out there selling product in and saying we're going to cure this or cure that. We support immune systems. We support brain boosting and function and focus. We support relaxation. Those are things that are really important. These are time-tested um, products within categories um, that, that are beneficial to consumers. But I will share this is that non-GMO, organic, plant-based, that's our ethos. Our manufacturer has gone through the same rigorous standards. So once we, 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 we move forward within Health Canada approval, we'll be getting it within 30 days. That'll open up EU, that'll open up Asia Pacific. Really, there are no barriers as far as anything that's within our product. Our product is very efficacious, but it's a very clean product and, and very simple ingredients. We, The hard part was the blending, and the harder part was to get it to taste good, and we've been able to do that. Um, so I guess when we're looking at the future of this industry and even the future specifically of ritual superfoods, um, how do you see this sort of progressing besides obviously what you've mentioned of expanding into different markets? Um, do you see the coming up with a lot more formulations? And even when we're looking at functional mushrooms, um, that's a big category to look at. There's, there's a lot of fungi out there and the, the potential seems quite limitless to some extent. Um, is that something you're going to be exploring and, and sort of how aggressively or are you going to be focusing on these products quite tightly for some time? Yeah. And, and we, there's the answer is yes. We'll be looking at uh, moving forward with multiple items this calendar year um, because it's a, our responsibility. B, our, our retailers and our consumers are demanding that. 
So we've got a premium product. We've got plant-based, as we've talked about before. We're in the superfoods category, not only with mushrooms. And, we'll, uh, you know, our pipeline right now, we're going to be adding 23 new SKUs this year. They wow. may not get out to retail until 2022, but we've got 23 new SKUs that will be some more mushroom-based. All of them will be organic within the health and wellness space, within the superfoods category, within the functional foods arena. All of them will do that. But some of these may be outside of just, you know, the, the mushroom category and the functional growth there. So we feel good about where we are. But our consumers are demanding that. If we're going to be good stewards of our business and grow our brand to the, to the premium uh, brand that Ritual Superfoods is, we've got to constantly innovate. One of the things I wonder with the superfoods market um, in general is it, you mentioned, you know, we've had access to this information for thousands of years to some extent. Um, how do you sort of explain that this category is now only just emerging as opposed to shouldn't this have been around for maybe a few decades by now, especially when you saw the whole foods trend pick up um, mm-hmm. surprisingly very little uh, efficacious foods like you're preparing today, um, do you see this changing that much more aggressively over the next 10 to 20 years? I do. And it's funny. I'm 58 and I've been doing this 35 years and I learn every day. But it's folks like you. It's it's folks that are label readers. They turn in and want to be plugged into what they're consuming. They're looking for alternatives to prescriptions. They're looking for alternatives to not only Uh, help their physical health, but their mental outlook. When you think about that, we've trademarked the world's greatest champion for mental fitness. And we mean that. Every one of our products is mindful of that, both healthy in both mind and body and spirit. Those are important things to us. So I see consumers being educated, being more educated and doing more research online doing more research out in the stores and really understanding that they're looking for that natural and healthy alternative. And yes, do I see that as a, as a piece of our growth? Absolutely. Do I see our retailers embracing that? They sure do because they want to drive traffic into their stores. They want to put products in that are efficacious and a cutting edge and a premium based. So when as well, you're also looking at consumers, just some sort of final thoughts here. Are you also going to be, I guess, paying attention more to people who are just looking to improve their overall health? Or are you also focusing on maybe, for instance, like the athletic community, which could be using this to massively benefit recovery time? Um, Again, having proper sleep, having proper mental health is extremely important to being uh, a successful athlete or successful anything, really. Yeah, and you'll see that in our marketing as we as we move forward here. You really will. The demographics on this one, again, aren't, you know, I've been in I've been in categories that there's a specific demographic. We've had a lot of success in my previous life taking an IPO with an energy drink, Celsius, which is a $4.7 billion market cap NASDAQ traded company right now that I was one of the uh, initiators in that's terrific but it has a smaller demographic a big a big market but a smaller demographic ours goes from a person interested in improving their mental and physical health to recovery to your point to decompressing with our stress and our rishi relax and so our demographic really is a broad span of someone's lifetime again i take all three products every day and um, as you can see, um, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty on the go right now and pretty energetic. And it's really made a difference in my life. That sounds fantastic. Well, thank you so much for talking today. Um, and obviously, you're saying that possibly in the second quarter of this year that you can sort of see products possibly coming to market. Yes. Perfect. Um, well, yeah, thank you again for, for talking today and providing this information on the superfoods market. I think it's a really exciting category that, again, part of me is confused that this should have been <laughs> around a little earlier, but it's exciting to see that uh, consumer trends are leaning towards a smarter product in the future. Once again, that was David Kerbel, the CEO of Ritual Superfoods Incorporated, trading on the CSE as RSF. 
If you'd like to find out more information about Ritual Superfoods, you can click the links attached to the article or visit their website at ritual.com. This podcast distribution was a paid-for service by Ritual Superfoods Incorporated, trading on the CSC as RSF on InvestorIdeas.com. Learn more at our disclaimer and disclosure page at Investor Ideas. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website, and this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.